All right, we're glad to have you back. Uh, many small businesses in Nigeria have been forced to shut down as a result of high cost of uh, running their businesses. Uh, poor power supply uh, makes most of them spend so much on buying fuel or diesel to power their businesses. Yeah, but it is not only private businesses or private business owners that are bearing the brunt of the power sector's failure. Now, a latest report on Nigeria's power sector says that the sector lost about 154 billion naira between January the 1st and May the 5th this year. Now, the sector incurred the loss due to the unavailability of gas distribution and transmission infrastructure, as well as water reserve challenges. Well, the power system operator also revealed that on May the 5th alone, uh, the sector lost an estimated 1.9 billion naira. That's in one day uh, due to the, uh, well, aforementioned challenges. Uh, but power generation companies say debt is also stifling their own activities. Uh, they have on several occasions complained that gas producers are cutting down supplies to the thermal electricity generating plants as a result of the Jenko's indebtedness to gas companies. Mm. And they're calling on government to come in and remedy the situation, especially to help clear uh, the hundreds of billions of Naira uh, debt being owed to uh, the generation companies. Mm. And our guest is already uh, just... <laughs> Ah, taking a deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a uh, deputy chairman, joint action front and media officer for uh, the Justice Development and Peace Centre, Achi Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Thanks good morning, Achi. Nice yeah. to see you. Was yeah, that a depressing good. one, just uh, hearing that intro, listening to that intro? No, no, no. I don't think it's depressing. It's annoying. Oh. Okay. Yes. It's, Is it's, it even a, more critical? I don't know. It, it's <laughs> annoying uh, because um, we have been at this for quite some time. Mm. And... Uh, I think uh, it, uh, it, it, the impression one gets is that uh, the uh, discourse and the happenings within uh, uh, the power sector in this country is being done in a way that gives the impression that some of uh, these uh, organizations have become uh, uh, centers of uh, blackmail. Yeah. Uh, you cannot now. They are asking for more money. They are asking to you know be, to be bailed out again by government. No, they're not and asking to be bailed out. They're saying, look. Uh, We've, we've been owed so much, m hundreds of billions of naira, yeah. and so we're not able to pay the gas supply. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when when, they call, when they call on government yeah, yeah, we, to intervene, yeah. what does that mean? Yeah, yeah. well, well I mean, who is doing the, the issue is who is doing the so, owing? Mm. Who is doing the owing? Because, mm -hmm. for instance, there is this uh, issue, uh, this uh, quarrel recently between the discourse and, and then the, the generating the, the, the jenkos. Yeah. You understand? And again, there was also uh, the you know bulk uh, you know uh, purchasing company, company also yeah. being held responsible for some of the debts that yep. are being owed and then again uh, we are told that consumers too are uh, also owing them so mm -hmm. it's a, it's it, it's becoming a very a vicious cycle you don't know exactly where the, where the blame is, is. Uh, who to hold responsible for what is going on but i think what is clear in the whole process is that the entire power sector in this country is mad in, uh, in all kinds of uh, you know controversies or, and you know so much incompetence on where inability to deliver inefficiency and the rest because mm -hmm. ultimately the stories we're hearing today are the stories we had you know last year and the and year the before, before that and mm -hmm. so nothing new has changed there is mm -hmm. nothing new mm -hmm. the issue of uh, you know prepared meters being made available is also in, you know there, there. The, uh, the other time the federal government and i think i was on this program to also to discuss it i think they had released about 39 billion naira for the purchase for the, for the purposes for the of uh, you know meters. prepaid meters mm -hmm. and all of that as at today about a, about one trillion you know uh, naira has been released to the power sector you know uh, in the past few years and all of that and what we have today today is that we do not have electricity we are not operating at uh, uh, we are told at the time that we got to the peak which was about 5000 you know megawatts mm -hmm. for the first time in the history of this country and the rest mm -hmm. today we are operating far below that yeah. and so yeah, I think one can even make the argument that in spite, of, in spite of all the investments and the rest, perhaps we have not exactly added one megawatt on a consistent basis. In, in, in all, you know, in all of this, have, yeah. I think it, it takes us, does it take us back to where it all began, mm -hmm. when the unbundling or the privatization well, in the happened. power sector started in the first place, yeah. where it seemed like there was racketeering or the... the, the balkanize this and sell it to cronies and friends or companies or agencies that were not competent in the first place who don't have an understanding of what the, the whole sector is but then let us just do look, it for look, business sake yeah, most unfortunately we are nigerians i mean unfortunately we are nigerians but most unfortunately 
we have seen what goes on in our country. Is it unfortunately? Is it no, unfortunate hey, to be a no, Nigerian? No, 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 no. I say fortunately. Uh -huh. okay. I say fortunately <laughs> we are Nigerian. Okay. But unfortunately, we see what is going on in this country. Uh, we are not exactly happy about, you know, all the controversies, all the corruption, and all, all of that that is going on. And so you cannot even have, in the midst of all of this corruption and the culture of impunity, and the political class that has not been exactly responsible and responsive to the needs of this country. You have you know, a power sector, one of the most important, uh, you know, one of the most important in this country, mm. being privatized, and then you separate that from corrupt practices and all of that. So the foundation, really, of anything is what is critical. The foundation was wrong. Look, I attended, uh, you know, a power seminar some time ago at the University of Lagos, where I was also a, a guest lecturer. And the former minister of power, mm. you know, was the lead speaker. From the presentation alone, who even was that? Bath Naji? No, no, uh, 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 that was. Um, uh, um, uh, I will try and remember okay, the name. Ho right. Hopefully, as well. I mm. wonder the 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 Jonathan, you know, Obasanjo era, mm. uh, you know, and he said that he was one of those that midwife the privatization exercise yes. and the rest. Mm. But from his presentation, yeah. did PowerPoint presentation, so fantastic and the rest. Mm. The conclusion you could only draw is that the entire. Uh, he didn't say it. You understand is that the entire privatization is a failure you, you understand he didn't put it in words yeah. so when i came to speak you know i had to do it in words i had to put it in words and and it was clear from that presentation mm. that the whole thing was not going to so, be, succeed and he came to me i think larry babalola okay. uh, you know that was the power minister mm. it was very clear mm. you understand and 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 he came to me and said look what i couldn't say you you have you know that you, you, you understand so is that this even is, part of the problem knowing yeah. what the issues are not calling a spade a spade yeah, instead well, of you well, know well, uh, you're yeah. calling it a, a farming implement isn't that where isn't that the root <laughs> of the problem really no, it, it, no, is, but it, it is because if yeah, we if we yeah, do is, recognize that look this is what the challenge is these yeah. are the problems yeah. and you don't name it you don't call it for, for but, but on the other hand yeah. I, I think they all know it, it's, it's, it's just like the president it's just like the president recently the statement where he, he didn't say nigeria he didn't use the word lazy yeah, but, but whatever he said you're talking to intellectuals everyone knows what that means exactly you know exactly you know and and i remember that the the vice president of the manufacturer Association of, Ni Association of Nigeria was there. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know that they have been at the bulk, at the receiving end of some of these contradictions within the power sector. And yes. he was annoyed. He was very angry. He said, look, that if they had known some of the things that they now know as a result of this presentation, that their attitude, some of the things that they now know as a result of this presentation, that their attitude would have been very different. He was, uh, he was upset. And I said, look, I've also been a victim. I was running a manufacturing concern and I ran it for quite some time. You know, plastic, uh, you know, uh, uh, plates and all of that, yeah. uh, plus the, generally, you know, in the plastic industry. And mm -hmm. So I had to shut down, you know, because it became unbearable. I couldn't. I mean, because by the time you bring in products from China, there is a 40, already mm -hmm. as at that time, a 40% cost, you know, uh, uh, deficit. So by the time, you know, you, you, you are selling your product, maybe about, uh, about uh, a thousand naira, yes. the Chinese man brings his own into the country. He's, he can sell for 600 naira hmm. and, and all of that. And I'm sure by now it is even worse than it was and about some 10 years ago. And we're talking China about currency swap China right now. Exactly. Okay, let's not even go there. Let's come back to the issue here of why the reasons uh, were being given for this um, huge uh, losses, you know, on a, almost on a daily basis. Look, you, you could say on, uh, on an average you lose about a billion uh, naira every day. They're yeah. saying, number one, lack of gas. Uh, lack of transmission and distribution, uh, water reserve challenges, yeah. and all of that. Look, look, you know, you know, don't Ngozi, we, Ngozi, enough, we had. Well, let uh, me you talk know, like yeah. an ordinary. Okay. Don't we have enough gas in Nigeria? <laughs> or don't we have enough don't we water? Have enough water? <laughs> Nigeria, Nigeria, Nigeria like has one of the highest deposit of gas in the world. In the world. You know that we've been flaring gas for forever, for so, forever in this country. Yes. I mean, I remember, I, I mean, I went to the University of Port Harcourt, mm. and I know that every evening you come out, you see on the skyline, like this red, it's like daylight, and all of that, mm. in places like Element and yes. the rest. Now, today, Port Harcourt is covered in suit as mm. a result, a consequence of what has been going on in that, in that particular place. You know, so these are some of the issues that, that we, we, we've had to grab, grapple with, you know, o over the years. But you see, I, I am more, so we have gas. Mm. But, they, but the question you must ask yourself mm. is that, a business plan, there was a business plan, feasibility study business plan that was drawn up, you know, in this industry by these same people today 
who knew what they were going into and that is the essence of that because you also do your your, your risk analysis and the rest yes. you understand within the terrain that you're going to operate and so that would give you an idea of even you know the the, the level of political interference you know in the run, running of this and then uh, the issue of gas coming in from the niger delta and all of that uh, vandalism and so on so it is after you have done all of these things that you know that you put the right kind of infrastructure mm -hmm. the right kind of you know uh, administrative imperatives mm. to ensure that when you uh, you get to this point and so on that you already have a fallback situation yes. and all of that but the reality is that look they had looked at electricity generation in this country you know distribution they had looked at the number of pop I mean our population in mm -hmm. this country 180 million and even if you discount those people for instance that might not have access to electricity it's a huge number mm -hmm. millions of people that are going to be paying you know bills yes. and all of that all of that so by the time you you know they, they did the calculation and wow they were thrilled with the figure they got mm -hmm. yeah. so they became you know so greed took over I think that is is what happened and then with a go with government officials that were also not patriotic uh, you know who are not really exactly a, a desirous of driving you know uh, power generation uh, mm -hmm. at this level to an appreciable level you know you, you now have from within you know from within the system itself you know the entire process Working was, was hijacked mm. now, you, okay. you know? the, the, the grid system will run in the country which looks like a unitary system of mm, government where grid, yeah. if you're generating power wherever you are you put it to the national grid and then it is distributed a lot, a lot of analysts have said that that is that is really part of the problem because if 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 you divide the the grid system where the northeast for instance has its own the northwest has its own not cent not central as south and so on so that where there is a problem you know you're able to it's narrowed down to that area and then it's handled you see it is why there's been this clamor for those even who are talking about restructuring and mm. all of that of the political system in this country and all of that and the economic base of this country you know it's part of the argument it's part of for instance why a federal government for you know for instance must be the exclusive uh, must be involved exclusively in rail you know transportation in the country mm. why 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 the federal government and not state governments where certain you know mineral resources are found must be the sole owner you know of all of these uh, uh, resources and the rest and all of that so this is also what is happening at the level of power you know infrastructure but i think there have been this you know with I, I, the entire you know power sector reform i think some provisions have been made for certain quantum of of megawatts of electricity that can be produced and not necessarily sent to the national grid mm. so communities and that is, these are mm. the models that we have in places like china and the rest where yeah. you have local communities mm. you know being able to provide you yeah. know, uh, you know their electricity own for their own, own their own electricity mm -hmm. and run it and all yeah. of that and then sell to the people within that that, that mm -hmm. vicinity mm -hmm. that is the way to go and again i think the power sector reform to some extent has been able you know to take care of that two megawatts three four megawatts and so on you're not obligated to put it on the national you don't grid. even need a license can, for anything you don't even that need a license megawatts. for that and so, yes. so it's all about that but again it's easy to say that because you know and it sounds nice but if you do not take a look at the overall mm. you know uh, atmosphere environment economic mm. environment mm. in the country that would also encourage people to so come in you know into that sector to make money from that then you also have a very a, you know, a very big problem so mm. the, the 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 external you know factors also must also be looked at how do we encourage because it's one thing to come out with an economic policy or economic objectives and the rest it's another thing to make sure that in the context of the policy itself mm -hmm. that there are ingredients certain ingredients and elements that would be beneficial to somebody who wants to come in for instance you know and be a player you Including know within that industry maybe the operational capacity of some of the uh, uh, power plants themselves uh, which yeah. are more or less um, obsolete no, no, of, of course, of course. But then again, so much has been made. I mean, I'm operating I, I, at a third yeah, of yeah, their I, I don't know capacity. Exactly, like I don't know exactly how, you know, uh, they are, what they are doing with their resources. Because from the moment some, are, some of them came in, the first few months and so on, they were making, in terms of revenue, mm. huge amounts of money. Now, they will tell you that they also have serious overhead costs and all of that. But they had been making a lot of money. Mm. And then again, if they have also been losing money, I want to say, that Nigerians too have been losing money from this project. And mm. that is even what concerns me. Because you find out that in some instances, with the uh, estimated billing that they are giving a lot of Nigerians, that mm. sometimes they are, they are stealing as much as 600 you know, percent 
you know, of, you know, of, of, of the money that is being paid by, by these Nigerians. Yeah. I can imagine a situation where uh, somebody, for instance, some are charged about 18, 18, 20,000 no, no, a month. Circumstances for the, a small month? shop, you yes. know, should be paying about 1,500, 1,000, you know, 1,000 a month. I can mm. tell you that because I've done a lot of studies on this, mm. and they are, you are giving them a bill of uh, 22,000 somewhere mm. in Magada, for mm. instance. So, what, so, how much are you making from, from that person? Mm. You are making, you know, sometimes over 1,000, you know, a percent from, from, from that. So, how much really, ultimately, and that's the question I want to ask, if it, their total revenue is about three trillion naira, for instance, all over the the, the discos and, and all of that, mm. about three trillion million naira a year. How much of that money is illegitimate? Perhaps one trillion naira and all of that. So you also have. But to the same discos will you still tell you they don't have cost reflective tariff. Like what pe uh, Nigerians are paying look, now again does not from, reflect again, the services Again, from that, from, from 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 the power, you know, uh, program I went for, I told you at Unilag and yeah. the rest. We we came to the conclusion that Nigeria. You know, had the highest tariff, electricity tariff in Africa. Mm. <laughs> and uh, what are, are we talking about? Cost reflective tariff on what basis? Mm. You understand? And even, for instance, you find out that yes, they lose money uh, in terms of, you know, when they are now transmitting, you know, from generating to transmission mm. to distribution there and are so on. Leakages so yeah, there. there are leakages here and yeah. there. What, what, who, who do you think pays for and it? It the is cost? the people, it is the, <laughs> the bills that they bring, you know, to you are also reflective of the losses. Hmm. <laughs> you know, that exactly. they have generated in the process of distributing, you know, electricity to you. It is also reflected there. Because it has been calculated from the point of distributing it and sending it yeah. to your house. Yes, so, no, of course. So at the, at between <laughs> where it is sent from and where it gets to, whatever losses that are there, you pay for the it. Consumer yeah. But the point there is, I, I, as it is right now, we've heard some people sometimes, some analysts who have said that some persons are benefiting from the status quo, the way mm. things are. I call it, I call it, and I, I've used that expression here, organized chaos. <laughs> <laughs> people organized are, people chaos. are benefiting from the organized Good. chaos it, it, in this country. That's why the refineries will not work. Right. Uh, so that people will continue to benefit from it. That's why certain sectors of this country, our hospitals will not work, where you know that budget, the monies yeah. have been budgeted for them, yeah. and there's no, the, the, the state of medical infrastructure in this country is, is almost zero. And so people are benefiting from that process. Same thing with the educational you know, system. Monies are released, security Money are released Every and sector. so on, and so the fact that you know the what you see as a result of maybe the release of these funds, and so it's not commensurate with the funds that have been released and so on. Even though in the first place they are not enough. Mm. For instance, you know you're you're talking about about healthcare. Mm. Uh, it, 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 I think the United Nations, as uh, the World Health Organization, says mm. about 13 percent of your of the, the, of, uh, the budget, budget. The national should be, and then that of the OAU is about 15 percent, and yeah. the AU African Union and so on. This has not you know been done. It's never been uh, but even the yeah. little that is released, you know, uh, okay. develops wings. Actually, right. get you there. Thank you so much for joining us, Center for Development and Peace. Uh, Thank you so much for your contributions. We hope the next time you come, we'll be talking about 20,000 megawatts. Ah, 20,000 megawatts. Where's the infrastructure? Oh, sorry. Okay. okay. You want to burn everything Let's down? Do an extra 1,000. <laughs> too, too much hope. <laughs> thank you, Achike, yeah, for all you, that. Sir, thank you. Okay. We've come to the end of today's edition of the program, but let's just do a rundown of the papers this morning, mm -hmm. what the papers said. Uh, the headlines, uh, the Punch newspaper, uh, refusal to honor invitations, mixed reactions as Senate says IG unfit for public office. Yes, indeed. And of course, the New Telegraph re-echoes just that. Uh, new PDP block issues seven-day ultimatum to Buhari and APC. And guess what? Just in case you've not heard, Omar Babalowo now has a private jet of his own. <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautiful. All right, Daily Sun, the new PDP members in APC revolt, right party, alleged marginalization, issue seven-day ultimatum on meeting with Buhari and Oyegun, the APC uh, the chairman. The Vanguard reports, it says boldly here, fresh woes for the APC. And uh, don't go to farms, militia warn uh, Taraba communities. All right, as, that, as disturbing as that will be. Let's move to the Daily Sun of, uh, now. The, the new PDP wing of APC signals discontent, considers options. A PDP uh, asks former members to return. And Senate declares IG enemy of democracy, unfit for public office. And Forbes rates Dangote among world's top 75 as he becomes uh, the world's uh, 25th richest man at $20 billion. Uh, Lagos Ibadan Road to be completed before uh, December. And ex-PDP leaders in APC gave seven-day 
deadline for talks. Mm. Well, in case you don't know who Omar Babalowo is, it's actually David O. David O. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the, the good news we'll be taking away today is uh, yeah. the rating of uh, Dangote as, as among the 70, uh, five. Uh, five, top 75 yeah. most influential people in the mm -hmm. world. Uh, some analysts have said that in the next 10 years, Dangote will reach the top 10 richest men in the world. That would be nice. You should just carry us along. <laughs> All right. You have a beautiful Thursday. Thank you very much for joining us. Tomorrow is another day. Of course, I am Ngozi Alebu. And I am Mike of Quatcher. Bye for now.